Okay, it needs to be said, the UX industry as we know it is slowly coming to an end. In this video I'm gonna show you the best strategy going forward if you want to be a successful designer. If you're a beginner, this year is the last moment to really start learning the fundamentals of UX design. These fundamentals are gonna be essential in the new reality. Oh no, Mihao is doing clickbait, call the YouTube police! Wait, before you start calling the YouTube police on me, hear me out. Here is a thought exercise. What is the most important thing for a company that's making a digital product? Um, UX? Wrong! Here is a recent example. Elon Musk, one of the richest people in the world, crowdsourced a free logo for his new X platform. I made a short video and an exercise about it, by the way, to show you how a process like that of rebranding a platform should look like from that very start. Obviously, it would be a lot more complex and robust, but you know what? It wasn't. A single image made from a free Unicode character was picked and then slightly tweaked to avoid any copyright issues. Then the animation showcasing that new logo was made using a free Envato template. They didn't even modify the animation. Do you see how the role of designers have been completely minimized here? It's just a whim of a CEO executed with the cheapest and fastest possible solution. And you might think that this is just an Elon thing. But it really isn't. I've been doing design work, including some branding, for over 24 years now. And I have come across CEOs all throughout that journey that would come in and add their 5 cents or 95 cents and completely wreck a project without any design knowledge on their side because they feel like that design needs to go in their direction. But this situation here is the same but about a hundred X. There are design systems in place, UI kit with every possible screen type designed and hundreds of existing products to copy entire patterns or flows from. You can just ask your developers, Take this app over here and copy it entirely. Just change the font to our brand font and change the color to purple. Easy, cheap and money talks. I call it the post UX era. At the end of this video, I'm gonna tell you what I think is the direction junior designers and mid-level designers should be taking right now to still be able to achieve success here. It's not a hack though. It requires a lot of work and changing your mindset. To better understand why the UX industry is shrinking and there are layoffs and there's way less jobs, especially for juniors, we need to go back in time a little. In 2009, it was the golden age of UX design. It was the best time to start your career in the industry. Well, the second best time is probably now. I've been doing web design for over a decade at that point, and that shift in how you approach designing anything was apparent and it was huge. User testing was the next big thing. Low fidelity wireframes started showing up, flow diagrams, sticky notes, and informed decisions. We also happened to explore new frontiers with the massively popular new era of touch-based devices. An iPod, a phone, and an internet communicator. UX agencies of that era though were really famous for abusing their newfound power because everybody wanted in on that whole UX craze. They were using a lot of dishonest, overblown processes just to charge clients more. And that led to huge bills with sometimes very, very mediocre results. But the UX craze was still on and the FOMO for companies was way too big to pass out on that. So they were paying more. Eventually though, the clients have caught up with those bad practices and by 2017, the industry has become much faster and much leaner. The bad taste about the UX agencies remained though, because when a lot of your services are considered a scam, then maybe UX has a pretty bad UX. Another thing 
was the new way of people interacting with interfaces through touch. The smartphone boom made everyone a user. And after 10 to 15 years of using a lot of products and many of them pretty well designed, regular people, non-designers, now have a pretty good idea of what good UX is and what it's not. They know what frustrates them and they know what delights them. Patterns were established, design systems were created. Most of design wasn't about exploration anymore. It was about reusing the patterns that we know their work, patterns that we know the users feel comfortable with, and then slapping a pre-made systemized UI on top of that. That's not necessarily a bad thing, because if the interface is better for the users, if it's easier to use, then yeah, UX is happening and we should all be happy. But it also means that many things are taken for granted and just copied from what came before. There is even less need for research anymore, except for doing research on market viability for new products. Because a lot of the typical flows have been researched through and through for all the possible target groups. There is also less need for UI design, because many people go with simple templatized UI kits. They just change the color and possibly maybe change the font and they're done. It's also cheaper. But the overall thing is that we as humans, and designers is a small subset of that, we now know how to make good apps and websites. Yes, eventually AI will speed up some of the processes in our work. We will be able to work faster, we will be able to achieve more in smaller teams, and that will contribute in a little bit of a way to less people being hired in the industry, especially less juniors. But AI won't replace designers. So if not AI, then what? I believe the future will still be about highly skilled, but also very curious designers. Getting a job as a junior is already pretty difficult and you need to be exceptional to get it. And you need to be exceptional at both the fundamentals, so coming up with flows, creating beautiful UI designs, and understanding what a good user experience is from the very initial starting point all the way to a clear, readable, and clean interface. But you also need to be forward thinking not just following tutorials and learning the tools, because that only makes you a Figma rectangle mover. And Figma rectangle movers are the first ones that are gonna be replaced. So if your main focus is learning a design tool, you should stop now. This is going to get you nowhere. Some of my courses can help you with that, this channel can help you with that, there is a ton of free content here that you can use to grow your basic level design skills. But there is something else, something that will place you instantly a part of all the other designers that are just moving some rectangles. You need to learn to have a designer's mindset. Designer's mindset is all about solving problems. It's a mindset that through creativity, curiosity and innovation is pushing the industry forward. Here is one example from our community, thinking about some unusual new solution and writing about it. Here is another one, inspired by my spatial case study exploration. Long story short, you need to go beyond just making screens and instead being able to get a little bit innovative, a little bit creative. And this is something that can totally be trained. You need to be curious, you need to do those little experiments, and then you need to write about them from your own perspective. This kind of exploration is a skill that helps you get better the more you do it. Do it regularly, write Medium or LinkedIn articles and add those case studies everywhere. First of all, you'll be training your mindset, but other than that, you're getting exposure to your ideas ideas and your thinking processes. And by showing your creativity to the world, you get more people interested in what you do and potentially working with you. I will be sharing a lot about that on this channel this year. But if you need some extra guidance and extra beginner launchpad for this, I'm announcing a new course pre-order today. 
it's part three of my portfolio course bundle. And if you already own that bundle, you're gonna get this course completely free. To accommodate the bundle increasing in size, I will be bumping the price up a little bit of it tomorrow. So if you want to get that bundle before that happens and secure your spot for that course and also get two really, really good portfolio courses already, then you should probably get it right now. Link in the description. If you just want this new course, you can also pre-order it right now, also adding the link down below, and it's gonna be significantly cheaper before the release. In the course, I'm gonna take you step by step through how to come up with these ideas, how to map them out, and how to write about them in a cool, engaging way that you can use to gain some social media attention and possibly get a job or join a startup. I'm gonna do everything I can, both on this channel for free and in my courses to make that happen. And that way, we'll both have a beautiful day.